Hi. Uh, today's question has been asked uh, at least sort of 30, 40 times. I know that this is something that's definitely holding landlords back. Uh, a lot, lot of people are waiting for this. Um, those 40 or so landlords are worried that buy to let isn't profitable anymore, uh, particularly because of the tax, tax regime. They feel like they're being taxed more heavily and therefore buy to let isn't profitable anymore. I've had at least 40 uh, emails on that subject, so I know it's uh, something that's holding holding people back. I don't mind paying tax at all. Um, yeah, I like to do my bit for society, for the economy, um, but I want to pay the right amount of tax, and I guess you do too. too. Um, also, if I've got a, a profitable property portfolio um, and a new tax re regime starts to make it unprofitable, that isn't any good for anybody either, particularly if um, landlords start selling up houses and tenants haven't got anywhere to live and I know that that's something that's you know, on the agenda for lots of landlords so the good news is that if you organize yourselves right um, you should actually end up paying less tax and the changes that I've made in my, my business over the last um, five years six years I have ended up paying less tax um, I'll tell you how and why in a moment but before that I've got a, uh, a few bits of admin actually. I mentioned in the last few videos that um, we've started asking for questions and people have been emailing in and writing comments. I've e received a lot of email comments, uh, in fact over, over a thousand <laughs> in the last few weeks. It's been a bit overwhelming, it's been a real boost to get those, thank you very much if, uh, if you've written in. Um, to get so many positive responses has definitely been a boost. Uh, I can't, I can't put it any way, any other way. But we're definitely feeling the pressure to respond. You know, um, there's some good questions in there, and there's some actions in there as well that we'd like to be able to sort of deliver on as well. So, after spending whatever free time I could this week sifting through the questions, I see that there's quite a few where the next step for that person would actually be to come and meet us. Um, so it looks like uh, it's kind of working. Then we're putting videos out there and um, I'm, we're, we're for sure we've already got three or four clients that we're working with because we've been doing videos. So I kind of knew that's what was, what was going to happen. It was, I think uh, I confessed, the ulterior motive right at the beginning. Um, you know, it'd be, it'd be, it's great to speak to thousands and thousands of people and hope we're making a difference as well. But for sure, some, some business is going to come out of it as well. Um, and that, that's good as well. Uh, unfortunately, some of these things are getting missed, of course, because there's thousands and thousands of emails. So um, I've made a few changes. First of all, I've employed someone to go through these uh, rather than j it just being me. So there's somebody there. They're going to be uh, scheduling all the social media posts and things and responding where, where possible as well. Secondly, we're going to give you three choices on every video. The first one is just subscribe to the YouTube video, um, stand on the, on the sidelines and, and you get whatever value out of that uh, that, that you can. Um, second is signing up to a mailing list where you get sort of more in-depth interviews and case studies and a couple of PDF guides and those kind of things sent out on a, on a regular basis. Um, I try and make it as useful as possible. It's still a one-way conversation. It's me giving things or us, the, the team giving you things. It's pretty much one-way traffic. It's totally free. There's no obligation. Um, the third, third option is to, there's now always a link to book onto a discovery day uh, or a discovery call um, have a conversation with one of the team here to see if we really can help you if that's something you want uh, we do those calls on zoom or you can come and see us we've got 50 odd slots a month uh, they book it quite quickly of course you know so there's only 50 slots I know this is relevant to probably only about 10% of you so uh, everybody else carry on watching but those three options are there, are there now that's the admin out of the way so now on to the question I'm actually going to add to the question as well because reading around it, um, I'm going to add to it and try and answer everything all at once because I think it's all tied up in the same thing. Uh, I'm going to ask, add something that Paul, thanks Paul, um, he, he said, he said, correct me if I'm wrong, the government keep bringing in laws that penalise private landlords' income. It's as if they don't want people to succeed and be wealthy. It can seem that way. I hear similar things from lots of landlords. However, I do disagree. Um, whether it's more rules or regulations, um, you know, more licensing, um, needing to be registered as a, as a landlord, more complicated paperwork, increased numbers of safety certificates, um, or being asked to pay more tax. I think it all is wrapped up. Um, all these changes are happening 
for a, another totally understandable actual re reason. Now, you, you can't quote me on these figures. I've, I've sort of done a bit of research and I was carrying them around in my head as well. Uh, different, different organizations have slightly different uh, numbers on these. These numbers will do to illustrate the point. Somewhere in the mid 20% of the UK's population live in the private rented sector. Somewhere in the mid 60s of all landlords only own one buy to let property. The property is often a property that they used to live in themselves. They are probably accidental landlords. I, I call them dinner party landlords. Uh, you know, they like to talk about their buy to let investment at a dinner party. In reality, most of them, putting it you know, bluntly, don't have a clue. And why would they? You know, they've only got one house. They're not invested in it. In, uh, in, in, in you know, they're invested in the property, but they're not invested in the idea of being uh, a landlord or being a good landlord. They're sort of playing at it. Um, so when it comes to looking after the property and the tenant, you know, conducting maintenance, keeping a decent and safe home, something we talk about all the time they're either not capable or not interested in doing a good job. Also, they probably bought the wrong house in the wrong area, they put the wrong tenant in with the wrong paperwork, at least some of those wrongs, um, which makes the base proposition only um, slightly uh, profitable or marginally profitable. So often they can't actually afford to do a good job, which is even worse. Perhaps won't come as a surprise to you, but some of these landlords are collecting their rent in cash and probably aren't paying tax either. Um, you know, some of these landlords, even worse, are, are sort of verging on, on criminal. You know, their activity, um, is, their letting activity is verging on the criminal, the way that they are you know, so far away from the, the, the decent and safe home standard. So if you're one of those landlords, you're 100% right, the government is trying to get rid of you. And, and why wouldn't they? Um, they'd rather you sold up um, and they definitely will be, they, the government, uh, and, and lots of other agencies as well, will be putting up roadblock after roadblock um, in your way to encourage you to get out. Um, however, they are also being very welcoming of landlords who are uh, prepared to step up. I can't give tax advice, of course, um, but I can tell you how I organise my own business, how my what my accountant tells me to do. I can also tell you what my clients um, have been doing as well. If you want the ability to claim mortgage interest as um, tax deductible against profit and loss, the very thing that was removed by Section 24, you almost certainly need to be buying in a limited company. Um, if you want more information on how to do that, in particular on how to achieve it perhaps without paying capital to gains tax or stamp duty, um, or even without the need to refinance your properties, they're all discussion points and you know, it not, it's not a one size fits all uh, solution, then you definitely need to um, book onto a, a, a team call, a Zoom call to discuss that with my team here because it's something we've achieved a few times now with, um, with my own properties and many times with clients' properties as well. So it can be quite a hassle to do. I'm not gonna sort of sugarcoat it. It's definitely a commitment you'll need to be serious about being a landlord. Um, now, when you take these steps, you are very much above the radar. You know, there's no, no room now for a, for a shoddy job. Um, you will need to meet all those rules and regulations and get the certificates. In my opinion, you'll need at least 10 properties to make it all worthwhile. Um, any, and so if you have less than that, you'll need to commit to stepping up to that level, maybe even before you go limited. If you are buying your very first property, I think for most people, get the right advice, it's quite a clear cut, start buying in a limited company. There are all sorts of different complications to that, but as a general rule, um, it's definitely something you should be considering. And in 90% of the cases I've seen, our clients saying, that's the route for me. So that's a general bit of knowledge for you. It turns out actually that some of these rules and regulations are actually quite a good idea. The ones that aren't a good idea, they, they can't be fought against, honestly. You've just got to be, comply as efficiently as possible. You know, to be honest, I don't, I don't even notice the 20 odd steps that you need to put in place to um, put a, a, a tenant into a new uh, new property now. Um, we just get on with it in a fuss-free way. So um, all these issues and things that you could be moaning about, just embrace them, get on with them, and get on with them and make, make, make them part of the business that just happens in the background without any hassle. Um, I'll leave you with one thought. 
Um, staying as you are is not an option. If you are that dinner party landlord, it is not an option just to stay as you are. You will get taxed so heavily it will become un unprofitable, almost certainly. Um, Non-compliant landlords will get more and more hassle from you know, government, councils, other agencies as time goes on. Um, finally, if you are flying under the radar, you know, collecting your rent in cash, very, very little of your business is on paper. HMRC are very uh, smart, we're, we're reliably informed, very smart artificial intelligence to sniff you out. You know, a quick search, it doesn't need to be a person doing this, it's, a, it's an algorithm somewhere or some kind of uh, AI robot. Search of your tax return, the land registry and your council tax records will very soon um, show up an, an undeclared rental property. So there's no flying under the radar and those people that are caught apparently are the people that were going for first. If you're absolutely blatantly going against it, then uh, you, the, you, you, your number's up very soon. So I'd say embrace being a good landlord and, and reap the benefits. Genuinely, since the government started ratcheting this up and how long has it been going on? Does it feel like a decade or five years, six years? I don't know, whatever it feels like to you. Uh, but I know personally it felt like we had to make some changes to this, you know, this, this new taxation and the counting side and the structure side. Um, five, six years ago, genuinely since that point, my business is paying less tax actually it runs a lot smoother as well some of the changes we made were good changes you know they had they had nice nice um, unintended consequences I and most of our my clients we've been finding it uh, business as usual so remember uh, the three options in the video description um, if you just want to stand on the sidelines that's fine the more the merrier you are all welcome and I'm, I'm still enjoying doing this um, but anybody serious who wants to move forward on anything not just this tax issue um, be in touch with the team and um, yeah we will have a free no obligation chat uh, like I said there's only 50 slots or so available every month so if you do want one of those click on it and if, if, if we can't fit you in this month then of course we can book up the next month as well so and until next time that's it for today thanks for watching